Hey guys, welcome to the first faction turn for Stars Without Numbers, Sons of Gold, the Galactic South Side. I believe this is June to July, uh, but here we go. These are our new factions, and let's have a war, I guess. Mm -hmm. I should have got this open before I started. Hmm, yes. Especially since it's taking a while. Running a little bit behind today, but you know how life goes. Five, four, three. Okay. Let's see how this turns out. Five, three, two, one. So the order is uh, Zenma, Unlimited Protection. Perimeter agents, governors in. Perimeter. Governor. Okay, so Zenma, they have a plan, and their plan is military conquest. That requires them to destroy force assets of rival factions. Uh, equal to your faction's force ratings. So, their force rating is 4, so they need to destroy 2. And uh, let's let's go ahead and kick this war off, right? Probably Zen might have some way to move their stuff around. They have a Panopticon on their planet. Strike Fleet, post tech Infantry, Scavenger Fleet, uh, Transit Web will probably let them do all sorts of crazy-ass shit. Let's figure out what that crazy-ass shit is. Uh, factions. Blah. So I won't be able to move and attack. But I'm pretty sure if I move them to the internet homeworld, internet will defend the planet from these invading forces, right? So my options are attack by change homeworld, which is worthless. Spin influence, refit, repair, sell, seize, or use ability. Uh, and it's probably going to be using all their movement abilities. So let's find transit web first. That might let me move everything I have uh, for some cost. <laughs> URS Transit Web. These facilities allow effortless relocation. For one fact, cred, any number of non starship cunning or wealth assets may be moved between any two worlds. Uh, that will help me move, um, well, the scavenger fleet or starship, so it won't help me move that. Uh, it won't help me move the post tech imagery because they are force assets. Uh, so, in fact, they won't help me at all. Uh, I, not a single bit. I might be able to move the hostile takeover. That's it. Um, so, dead. Let's see if I can move those fleets out. Strike fleet is, oh, sorry, uh, scavenger fleet. Let's see here. Uh, bu, 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 along with the facility with heavy guns. Okay, so it takes like a star thing with them. It takes a like spaceport with them in the jump. They move to any world within three hexes. Scavenger fleets cost two fat creds to maintain. So they can do it as an action. Move to any world within three, which works great for them. Um, the strike fleet also move that far. If so, yes, yeah, strike fleet. As an action, they can move to any world within one hex of their current location. Oh, no, no, that's Space Marines. Uh, strike. Uh, as an action, they can move to any world within one hex. Okay. Uh, they're not going to be able to go all the way. Let me pull up my map. Uh, sector map. So they're currently in Anonku, and they need to get to Azagateri, which means they're going to be stopping in the Orzadi system. We're going to just jump everybody. Over to Orshadi. Is that my bigger map? 
Let's sustain that. Okay. Uh, but, but, but we will relocate everybody to Rosati that we. Uh, and that is basically an act of war. Rosati. What does this pre-tech manufactory let me do? As a action, the owning faction can roll 1d8 and gain up to half that many fat creds rounded up. So that's what we're going to do. I mean, as long as we're activating all the special abilities, uh, it gains an additional die on all cunning attack and defenses. That's not very worthwhile here. Faction to re-roll for an action taken on that world, or force an enemy faction to re-roll. Okay, so that's defensive as well. Uh, 1d8, and get half that many fat creds. One. So, I guess I've forgotten the most basic step. Uh, they have six income, but they lose two of it for being a scavenger. Which drops them down to four income and then they pop back up to five because of that sweet sweet uh pre-tech manufactory they're gonna end up poor and that's where we're at they are sending two fleets pretty big move on their part i mean the strike fleet's not super strong but it hits pretty well uh scavenger fleet is a monster though Scavenger Fleet is beyond condemningly strong. Next up in our lineup is uh, the Unlimited Protection Agency. They're mercenaries. I believe they have a specific goal in mind. Per, uh, Invincible Valor. Uh, Invincible Valor is destroy a force asset with a minimum purchase rating higher than your faction's force rating. So if it's a 3, you need to destroy a 4. Their force rating is a 4, so they need to take out a level 5 force asset, which means they need to fight the NON Supremacy, uh, who are the only ones who have force 5 and above. So they're about to go down swinging against the Inanins, and I feel like what's what's happening is they get hired by the Zenma uh, to join join the war. I don't know that they've got much else going on. I think those mercenaries can move on their own, however. Let's see. Here. Oh, they might not even have to. Uh, the Unlimited Protection Agency is a mercenary group, which means uh, all faction assets gain this ability. As an action, it may move itself to any world within one hex. Boom. There we go. They are going to simply remain in place and join the war on the Zenman side. Next faction turn, everybody on the Zenman side. Strike fleet, uh, scavenger fleet, second strike fleet, and the mercenary group are all combined going to jump into the internet. Or, sorry, as a Gateri system uh, to fight the internet supremacy. Yep, not much going on there for the unlimited protection. Sorry, they're super boring. <laughs> uh, perimeter Agency. These are anti-Maltech extremists uh, who are holdovers from the old days. All of their stuff is currently stealthed, and their plan is to take down the governors who are, of course, if it hasn't been implied enough on the show, the governors and the entire planet of uh, Sotkubian are all simply puppets or zealous. Uh, their goal is intelligence coup, which means destroy cunning act uh, assets. Uh, and so they want to land on the governor planet, which is no problem for them, and start taking out cunning assets, which is what those guys have. Uh, so I think that's what's going to happen this turn. The perimeter agency is going to show up uh, with those zealots. They're moving them to... So we'll we'll mark down that they are now in Orzadi, uh, and they are now on the planet Sotkuvion. And that's it. They can just move between planets, huh? Next turn, they'll be going crazy. Uh murdering and murdering. So let's see how that works. Let's see how that works. 
I don't think I get to pick what I attack. I think that uh, the governors will probably have to just throw stuff in their path in order to take from getting their base hit. Uh, successful attack can destroy an enemy. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. Attacks can only be launched against known assets. Selects one or more of their own assets and target a rival faction. Each attacking asset is matched against a defending asset. Each attacking asset can attack only once a turn. All right, so uh, basically, the governors will have two choices. Either take the hit directly to their base of influence, which is super bad, or throw their other, like their lawyers and their marketers and their uh, transport lockdown all in the path of the incoming zealots uh, and hope that the counterattack, I guess it's just going to be lawyers, uh, and they might not even be able to attack horse assets, actually. I remember lawyers had some sort of special deal. Let's see here. Wealth assets. Lawyers cannot be used to attack or counterattack force assets. Okay, so uh, the governors are screwed. They have absolutely no way to deal with this incoming attack that doesn't revolve around slowly dying. Uh, well, the first strike will, will be what gets them. After that, it's going to be a bit more of a problem. Okay, uh, next up, perimeter agency set to attack. Next up are the governors. Their job is uh, intelligence coup as well. Uh, and they need to probably destroy some cunning assets. Did anyone send cunning assets into the area with them right now? Not yet. Uh, but they do know about that Panopticon Book of Secrets because those are completely open. So they might want to send some people to the... Yeah, yeah, I love the idea that uh, as Zenma sends forces into the governor's system, the governors send, like, lawyers back, and they're like, yep, we're here to protest the issues that you just brought along. So what is marketers? Uh, as an action, the marketers may deploy cunning versus wealth against a rival faction assets. If successful, the target faction must immediately pay half the assets purchase costs rounded down or become disabled unless this price is paid again. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. I want to do that. Uh, the marketers will. Uh, that doesn't accomplish their goal, though. That just kind of pisses off Senma. Let's do it the other way around. Let's send the lawyers uh, over to Zenma. Send them right over to Zenma. So, Covert Transport Net lets me do something. Probably something pretty interesting. Uh, any special forces assets can be moved, and lawyers... Special Forces, so congratulations, you have successfully redeployed to the Anon-Q system. Uh, Anon-Q, you are now on the planet Zenma. However, you have been tagged, No, you're there. Cost anything to use this? Nope. Transport lockdown. The rival faction cannot transport assets onto that planet. Interesting. Uh, I feel like they are probably going to transport lockdown just to make it defensively. So, uh, they are... Oops, that's the wrong one. I want to go here. Roller is uh, D10 plus 6 versus D10 plus 7. However, what they don't know is that Zenma have Psychic Academy, which means uh, they get to roll an extra D10. Let me copy this down here. I can... Once per turn, can reinforce a rival faction reroll a d10 whether or not they're involved in it. All right, yep, that works for me. Uh, we'll see if it's needed. D10 plus 6. This is the governor's. D10 plus 7. This is Zenma. Uh, Zenma is successful. The marketers are, I'm sorry, the transport lockdown has failed. Uh, and Zenma is free to continue moving throughout the system with no problem. Uh, oh, man, I've been failing to do monetary upkeep. Five, not eight, five. 
finally, the Inuin Supremacy, who have just kicked off all of the Zenmen diplomats on their planet and have a small problem of Zenma moving in their direction. Is they're acting last, they are in the best possible place uh, to attack or defend. So let's see, take control of a planet, becoming the legitimate planetary government. Let's look at their assets. They are very strong, the uh, Inuit supremacy. Uh, capital fleet, I can probably move super far. You know, let's, I mean, this, this one's going to take a while because we've got to figure out what's going on. Oh, we'll start with um, money, right? I've been forgetting to do that. So they have two party machines, one for each side. Uh, the Inuit supremacy is a Cold War world with two factions on it. Uh, we've seen on the show how they're fighting each other. Uh, so their capital fleet cost hella bucks to maintain, but they have two party machines gathering money and influence for them. Okay, capital fleet, so expensive. As an action, they may move to any world within three hexes of their current location. All right, so they can move three, no problem. Next up is deep strike landers, which are probably... Yep, uh, it can move any one non-starship asset, including itself. Uh, can be moved between any two worlds within three hexes. Uh, this move can be done even if the local planetary government objects. Uh, I think space marines can move themselves. I know mercenaries can. Space marines, as an action, they can move on any world within one hex, whether the local government permits it or not. Look at those uh, deep strike landers. That moves between three hexes, right? Good, excellent. Blockade runners... That's blockade fleet. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Nope. Oh, it's probably a wealth asset. Right. Other direction. Blockade runners. Uh, can move to any world within three. Okay. Capital fleet can move to uh, NQ. Deep strike landers can throw the space marines to NQ. Mercenaries can't go anywhere. But one... Post-tech infantry can't move either. I wonder if we take capital fleet, deep strike landers, uh, blockade runners, and space marines, move them all to a non-queue, uh, and uh, attack Zenma this turn. Uh, while, while the Zenma forces move out into this middle area, Inuin has Inuin supremacy has started the war without them. Uh, leaving behind some infantry on planet, the post-tech and the mercenaries, to block them. And I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, they're going to force an invasion of Zenma in retaliation. So here's the war, everybody. Uh, and this will probably let me do some really cool stuff, like hire the players to help basically privateer defend the planet that they're on, because uh, they're currently in pretty deep trouble and owe several favors to the local government for all sorts of stuff. Plus, you know, Jonas is captured, so. Oh boy, that's going to be crazy to work out, but there we are. Uh, we now have Zenma with a smaller, slower fleet uh, held back by their their scavenger fleet's movement. Uh, well, one of the two of them is slower. It's probably the strike fleet, actually. Uh, held back. And in Inuan, we've got a massive invasion force of space marines and deep strike landers and a uh, giant-ass capital fleet. I mean, that capital fleet is going to lay waste to Zenma. It's going to be real bad. However, Zenma has quite a few defensive assets, which will make things pretty, pretty good. Uh, I mean, these guys have a pretty good force rating. Nothing here has a cunning. I think that anyone is in a really good position to just clean up on Zenma and wipe out. They're not going to be able to take the planet in one turn, but they're probably going to be able to take out one to two assets while Zenma and their new mercenary forces show up. To get back into the defensive game. So anyway, that's this turn. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.